Okay, guys, um, this is Ricardo from Watch With Us. I'm trying to get John um, on here because we wanted to talk about this whole whole coronavirus situation that's going on um, and how it's really, really affecting um, the industry in, in multiple points. So give me a second, guys. I'm just waiting for one of my guys to join us. Hey, John. Hey. Um, so what basically happened was I'm here with John, um, who's also a partner of Watch With Us. We were just on the phone. We were having like, having like our kind of weekly, our bi-weekly call. There he is. Yeah. We were having our bi-weekly call and we started talking about this whole situation, this whole coronavirus situation. Um, it was me, John, and another one of our partners watched with me, um, also known as Anthony. Yeah. And we were sitting there and we're just like, you know what, all the stuff we're talking about, we might as well just hop on Instagram Live to kind of have a full discussion. Um, because it, it's, a, it's a lot of stuff pertinent to this current situation. Um, because this situation has kind of gotten... It's gotten to a point now where I think both John and I and Anthony as well are kind of saying, well, one, um, at this point in time, you know what, let's just cancel Basel. It's, yeah. it's, 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 getting, it's getting ridiculous. Um, the fact that you're having individual brands coming out and canceling for the virus um, is one thing, but you still have this huge event that's going to have thousands of people attending it. I mean, it gets to a point in time where the press of continuing this event is going to be worse than whatever financial loss you might have from this. Um, because just to, and, and I also was mentioning this in the post I made about this is you also, if you do decide to continue, you at some point in time you have to address this. You know, you know what do you have in place to combat it? What are what are you doing about Basel to kind of face this situation? Um, because it's getting to a point now. Today, if you guys didn't realize it, both Boulevard and Citizen, of course, um, Citizen being a parent company, uh, they own Boulevard. Both of them are dropped from Basel World, and along with their along with their subsidiary brands. Yep, and for those who haven't attended Basel, um, Boulevard and Citizen represented, I'd have to say, almost, I would rough estimate anywhere from ten to twenty percent of the second floor, in terms of, of the of just hall the, one of hall of uh, of all one. Actually, the first floor too. The first floor they took up a big chunk as well, didn't they? I think I think they they may have had. I'm trying to think of Fred, was Frederick Constant. Frederick Constant and Alpina were there. Yeah, on the first floor. Uh, uh, but I think but I think I do think a few others. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but in terms of just pure size, I remember it was Citizen. They were showing off Boulevard. You had Arnold and Son in there as well. So it, they take up a big amount of space on the second floor, and they've now canceled. Um, attending Basel and right, right. it's it's I don't know I think we've reached that point well it's, it's just strange I mean if if you look I don't really follow the stock market much but the stock market took a, a nosedive today by a thousand points um and with two major corporations pulling out of Basel um you know the coronavirus is becoming a real thing in the watch industry and yeah. um it, it's really interesting to note and the funny thing is I put a, a video uh, yes, uh, I'm sorry, last week, the end of last week on Watch Gage's channel. And I mentioned, you know, we're talking about a, a run of, of NTH watches that we're expecting in and that, you know, there's a good chance it may be delayed. We don't know if they're they're going to be halting shipments from China and things like that. And I had a couple of people in the comments say, oh, you know, you're trying to sell now because of the coronavirus. Use that as a sales tactic. No, it's a real thing. I mean, you know some of these factories people are not allowed back into the city where the factories are because of the coronavirus and and, and i think something you and i alluded to before we got online is that what a lot of people don't realize is a lot of components for big swiss brands are made in china yeah so we're I mean, not sure how that's going to affect i'm not going to name brands but major swiss brands and their deliveries yeah. of, of products yeah i mean it's always 
been a topic of conversation, you know, just how much, just how real is Swiss made. But even if you take into the fact that, okay, let's say a lot, a lot of the movements are made in Switzerland. Right. There's yeah. always been talks and discussion that, that a lot of the outside stuff, the cases, um, dials, hands, dials, bracelets, uh, bracelets, a lot of that actually gets made in China. Does. And this has always been a conversation. And now you're going to get to a point where if there was anything maybe down the pike or down the line that they, they had plans of making or that they've potentially announced, right now those things would be in the midst of manufacturing. Yeah. And if you start to see some delays, and actually non-watch related, one of the biggest things that um, our partner Watch With Me brought up is we all know, I mean, it, it, it tends to hit the airwaves when the next iPhone comes out. Right. And that's usually somewhere between September and August. If we hear that that is pushed back, that should be a clear sign to everyone that this situation is reaching a crazy, crazy level. Because that's yeah. another thing that right now, probably mid-summer is when they would start just pushing the manufacturing on this. And unless this situation gets better, you're going to start to see a lot of stuff coming out of China kind of get pushed back. Um, this is going to affect everybody. If you're a micro yep. brand and you, you major you, brands, everybody, major brands, micro brands, if any, if any part of your manufacturing is being done in China, which I mean, we've seen like there are a lot, there's a lot of watch manufacturing happening in China. It's going to be affected. Yeah. And this, this just goes back to what we initially said you know, at this point in time, and and guys, I just hope you understand. We're not out here trying to scare people. Not even a little. Um, it's just a discussion based on the fact that Bull of Incidents and pulled out of Basel. Yeah. You know, I mean, honestly, I, I'm not going to be surprised if we hear a couple other dominoes fall over the next, you know, week or two or three. Yeah. At, at, at the bare minimum, what I'd like to see is, is at least a statement or something coming out of Basel saying, Hey guys, we understand your your fears. Here's what we're doing, and here's what we're doing to kind of kind of treat these. There's going to be another level of maybe may biomedical security. Yeah. Like here's what we're doing to attack and and approach this. But I haven't heard anything. Well, many and years ago, I don't know if you remember, many years ago with the whole SARS outbreak, um, mm -hmm. you know that year at Basel, half of the people at the fair were wearing masks, you know, or more. And uh, it was it was a real thing then. And this is something different. I mean, I certainly don't think this is going to be a, a plague of any sorts. Mm -hmm. But it's just interesting to see how it's going to affect Basel, how it's going to affect uh, manufacturing of brands and watches and bracelets and cases and everything else. It's yeah. really interesting. Yeah. So, um, yeah, now you, you have these two brands and it's it. Yeah, like I said, it's very interesting. Um, really don't know where we're going to be. Um, in literally the next week, I, I, I it, it's weird. Everything kind of the dominoes really started falling once, once even Seiko. I think once Seiko canceled their summit, which is which kind of was kind of their own thing. I think that's when people really start to realize, oh, oh, this, yeah, this isn't just a, oh, people are being slick and they're trying to get out of Basel world and do their own thing. No. Seiko yeah. already done that. Seiko yeah. was already out of there. Right. And the fact that they decided, you know what? Mm, no, nah, we don't want to touch this. We, yeah. we, we probably just spent millions on doing this, but we still are going to eat this because we realize that it's not, it's not going to be safe for, safe for our attendees. I mean, once that kind of happened, I think that's when people should have realized, okay, this is, yeah. this is no joke. Um, yeah. Give me one second. I'm, I'm, I know, I know Anthony's trying to join. You know what? Uh, I'll bounce and let Anthony jump on with you. Okay. I'll text me, him me, once I bounce. Let me, let me grab him. Take care, guys. Hey. Hey. hey what's buddy. up, man? Hey, I was just talking to John. I guess you can't have three people on this. Yeah. Thing. Yeah, I think that's the case. I was just, uh, I was watching. And, uh, yeah, I mean, for sure, I think, you know, what's also interesting, not to mention the brands that I think kind of go under the, you know, Swiss made quote unquote that are going to be affected, but also perhaps, you know, being the Chinese market, not just in China, but across the, like the U S 
with the lack of sales because of, you know, how scared people are about this. Perhaps, you know, we'll end up seeing more Rolexes come to market. Maybe there'll be more Rolex, you know, in the cases because of this. So I think yeah, uh, affect the market in so many different ways. Yeah, because it's interesting you brought that because I think in one of our previous videos, we were talking about just how much stock is out there in terms of just watches that have gone unsold. Um, you know, they've made too many. And it, it makes me wonder if this will now present an opportunity. I know this sounds, it sounds terrible that I'm saying this, but in terms of an opportunity, <clears throat> but if this now opens up the market to a lot of those watches and them kind of pushing, um, pushing more of those watches that they haven't had an opportunity to sell, if this now kind of pushes those watches out, because if sure. things slows down on what they're currently trying to produce, I mean, you have opportunity now to kind of move what you already had, but then you have the fear of people that which can just go crazy. People might just say, you know, I don't care where it's from. I don't want, I don't want anything that I can't physically see in front of me. Right, right. And it, it's, oh man, the this the effects this is going to have are just crazy. Yeah, that's just the nature of where the market is right now. I think, uh, you know, being I work in retail, I see it firsthand, you know, there's a, there's definitely a lack of sales from, from that segment. And I think uh, it, it will correlate to, you know, a, a ripple in the industry, whether that's the very high end industry being able to supply more watches because there's a, a missing, uh, a missing segment there, or, you know, the kind of entry level that's relying on, you know, Chinese labor to kind of make some of their watches are not going to be able to put out as many. So I think yeah. we're going to see a, a lot of transition and a lot of, uh, uh, kind of hiccups in the next few months if, if things don't resolve. Yeah, yeah. But I, I was also telling them because you're the one that made up made that point about Apple and just right. how big that part of manufacturing exists in China and the fact that, yeah, if we do see that, how crazy that would be because it would let everyone know that, no, this is, this is a very serious thing. Um, right, right. I mean, if Apple, if Apple can't get it on track, then uh, chances are a, a Kickstarter brand is going to have some issues as well, supply, getting supplies through some factory. Yeah. So I think time will time will uh, tell. But I would assume, you know, the Apple leaks for the next iPhone are just starting to come out. And usually they start shipment towards the end of the year. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think September comes out. But, you know, that's that's coming off, you know, sooner than we think. So I think uh, Apple would be a bit more proactive and they think if they think there's going to be a delay I, I would think they would go ahead and say that in the next few months so yeah. we'll just have to see yeah it's interesting because on my side of things you know i've always talked to a bunch of micro brand owners and the key has always been for a lot of them is to try to get it so that instead of doing a whole kickstarter pre-order kind of thing they're doing they have items on hand they have enough capital to have everything on hand so that when the customer comes, it's right there and it ships immediately. And right. it's kind of where they all want to be. It's difficult for a lot of them because it's hard to, to come up with that much capital straight off the bat, unless you have investors. And sometimes when you have investors, you just don't have that much of a, hear, of a hearsay, not hearsay, say so when it comes to what you want to create. Um, but now, I, I mean, those type of brands might be in a, are definitely in a better position if, if mm -hmm. they're, they're already set, whereas people who, who are so dependent on, on getting the money first, then starting the manufacturing process, and then getting it out to, to customers, this is a very, this is a difficult situation for them. Yeah, yeah, uh, for sure. And I, I mean, it, it, there's a lot of speculation and a lot of people say, perhaps we don't even know how bad it really is. Mm -hmm. uh, are they, you know, letting out all that information, but I mean, uh, it's kind of like uh, a lot of brands were leaving Basel world to begin with. I know, you know, going back to what we were originally talking about, it, it's interesting because I think a lot of people now say, you know, you don't even need to go to Basel world. You don't need, need to go to these trade shows because with the uh, social media and the internet, you get the information just as fast, if not faster than actually being at the show and only getting 45 minutes or 10 minutes to sit with a brand. Yeah. So perhaps this is, you know, a segue to, you know, a lot of these brands saying, you know what, perhaps we'll, we'll start doing it more on a, a digital platform to, to, you know, release all this stuff because getting the vendors to come out and, uh, you know, you never know when something like this is going to happen. You have to cancel it. 
So I think uh, maybe moving forward, this is uh, going to be kind of where the, the industry is going to go in terms of maybe releasing pieces through uh, just social, social media or uh, some kind of digital platform. Yeah, like a, a Basel Live or like a, right. a, you know, a, a way of just seeing the product online and not having to worry about the travel and everything like that. But you know what? It's always nice to actually see the watch itself. It's always oh, for sure. a for nice sure. thing. But even, I say that, but even with that being the fact, a lot of people who go to Basel don't actually get one-on-one -on -one time with the watches. For sure. And, and it, you know what? With all the brands leaving, I mean, there's hundreds and hundreds of brands. If every brand goes ahead and tries to do their own thing, no one's going to get to see it anyway because you're going to have to choose, you know, two brands and that's it. Yeah. You know, not these. Not everyone has the money to to go ahead and travel the world nonstop throughout the year just to see the new releases. So, yeah. I think uh, I would imagine this is going to be an issue, and in a few years they'll probably go back to having one big trade show again. <laughs> yep. You know, I was thinking the same thing because the main point of the trade show was consolidate, bring everyone together in one location instead of having it be all over the place. Right. And it's right. weird. As people are start going, you're kind of just like, but no, no, the main reason we did this was so we wouldn't fall into this mess. Right. So we wouldn't have one event every two weeks, a major release. No, to just have everything in one place. But I know, I think at the end of the day, the brands would love it because I, I'm willing to bet a lot of, a lot of people behind the brands are just like, if I always have to worry about releasing at Basel, that means I have to schedule everything around Basel. I have right. to set up manufacturing of Ron Basel, so right. I have to prototype. I have to do this. I have to do that. But if you had your own frame, your own gear that you that worked best for you, I know a lot of brands that'd be like, you know, what? Omega. Omega wasn't at Basel last year, right? No, no, no. And you know what? I was speaking with one of the head of the brands of, for the whole U.S. Mm -hmm. They had one of their best years ever last year. You, it's not necessary to show off the product. You know, you, th listen, for the consumer, absolutely. But these trade shows are not for the consumer. They're for the brands to look and see what they want to buy. And for the most part, the brands already know what sells and what the client wants. So they're going to go ahead and place the orders anyway. Yeah. And if it's a limited product, they know if they have a client for that. You, so, mean, the, you mean the ADs? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. They know what they have to order. It's really, you know, for the, the end consumer that wants to see it. And they're not going to these trade shows. So uh, if you look at from what I heard speaking with Omega, they had one of their best years ever last year. And they weren't even part of Basel. You know, um, so I, I think it's not necessary. It's, it's great. And I know being kind of a, a watch geek, I look forward to it every year. And, you know, I'm on in front of my phone or my computer looking at all the releases and reading up on it. I love it. And I get just as much out of it. Would I love to go? Absolutely. But I do get a lot just reading about it online. Yeah. And most people will. And I think the same can be said for brands. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it might just get to a point where a brand will say, hey, these are our major markets. These are, where, these are the areas we want to concentrate. And we'll decide whether we want to do a smaller event in these major markets. Right. And you know what? We'll just focus on these markets since they represent um, a ton of our buyers. But but it's interesting, I, and it just came to my mind. I wonder how it is on the flip side. We keep on thinking about the manufacturing side. I wonder mm -hmm. if this now affects anything in terms of buyers, consumers. Because I know a lot of brands depend on that market, that Chinese market, for right. a lot of their, their watch purchases. And a, 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 a huge percentage of the amount of watches they sell go. Well, that's, that a, that's, what I, that's what I mean about, uh, about Rolex. You know, not just not just for China, but you have a lot of the, the Chinese tourists that are over in the, in the States buying. And you know what? There's a drop in sales because of this. You know, they're, they're scared they're, they're, whether they're not leaving their house or they just don't want to kind of spend that extra income right now. I think you're going to start to see uh, not a saturation of Rolex. I don't think we'll ever get there. But you know what? I think you're going to start to see a lot of those rare pieces, maybe not a steel Daytona, but I think eventually you might be able to walk into an AD and see, you know, a, a, a Batman or maybe a Hulk again or a regular Submariner. You, I think I think that's not that far off. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll see just how the market Time will works. tell. So, yeah, time, time will, will tell. definitely tell. 
Uh, off the off the top of your head, do you remember exactly what the dates for Basel were for this year? Uh, <laughs> not the exact dates. I believe it's the last few days of April into May. Okay. I, I'm ninety percent sure it's the it's the very very beginning of May. Okay. Um, so, so we're but, we're we're about like we're about you say two and a half months away. Well, two, less yeah. than that. Yeah. So we'll see what happens. We'll see if if Basel at least puts out a release, starts talking about it. You know, but it's uh, only going to take, I think, one really big brand to kind of step away, and it's all going to crumble. Yeah. So yeah. I, I honestly don't think it'll end up. Uh, uh, it'll end up being a Swiss brand. I, I like a major mm -hmm. Swiss brand because I right. I really can't see a Rolex just saying no, we're not coming. No, no, I don't think so. I, I don't. I don't. That would that. be crazy, though. Yeah. If, 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 <laughs> I think. Let me just tell you right one, now, if Rolex isn't there, no one is going. <laughs> I think. I think if that were to happen, they would cancel it before you find out that Rolex isn't coming. Right. Right. Like, that's one brand that I honestly believe is if if they went to Basel and said, "Hey guys, we don't we don't really want to do this. It's not really a good time. We don't want to be at the show." Right. Basel would say, "Okay, you know what? Yeah, we're not going to have the show. Sure. We're just, we're just not going to have the show." Um, because if we can't have the key attraction to the show there, it, it defeats the purpose. Right. I agree. Yeah. But man, it was good talking to you. Yeah, man. I had fun. We got to, we should do this, uh, maybe once a, once a week, we just hop on here and just, uh, whatever's trending. And yeah. obviously now that with the news, with more brands leaving, it's a perfect opportunity, but, uh, yeah, yeah, man, we'll, we'll touch base soon and we'll do another video and, uh, anyone who's watching this, thank you very much. And don't forget to check out our YouTube channel. Okay. See you guys. Thank you for joining us, man. It means a lot that you guys dropped in. Uh, we have a couple more videos coming out. Um, we have a video with uh, RT Custer from Vortic. Got a chance to sit down with him, go over the situation he's go he's having. Um, and uh, another episode of Bearded Time. I know there's some videos coming out with from um, Anthony. So, yeah, we, John Keel and I, we just did a video actually about uh, Basel World, so that should be coming out soon. And uh, I think uh, um, we have a giveaway kind of coming up or yes, posted. So Yes, I think the, yeah. this Friday we have, uh, we're giving away a Timex M79 this Friday. So yep. guys, hit the um, YouTube, check out that video. The link to join the giveaway is in, is in the description of the video. And um, yeah, guys. We'll and shameless that. shameless plug, I'm doing a giveaway on Watch With Me uh, YouTube as well. So go check that out if you want some cool uh, Omega swag. But, yeah, guys, had fun. And uh, until next time, man, take it easy. See you. Later.